Welcome back, gentlemen. Coming to you from Miami, Florida. Today I've got a great video. Myron from Fresh and Fit has taken the streets of Florida to double down and explain to people why women deserve less in today's society. Here we've got a video. Women's coach got told why women can't lead. Lebanese, can you speak Arabic or no? I do, yeah. Kalamata Mikwais? Oh, I come in win. Sudan. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. 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 Cool, cool. So, um, you can say so do you agree with the sign? I have it on there. It says why women deserve uh, less, or sorry, women deserve less change of mind. Do you agree with that? Um, it's a little hard without the context. That's actually why I sat here. I was so ah, curious. So you it's understand so... the context. Yeah. The context is I think men need to stop pedestalizing women that don't deserve it, you know, whether it's giving them attention on Instagram, dates, exquisite trips, whatever it may be. A lot of guys don't make women earn validation anymore. They just get it for existing. Okay, so in your opinion, a woman has to earn a man's respect and validation. Yeah and resources and all the other benefits that come with being a guy. I think if it's human, it's just, if it's just common sense as a human, right? It's common sense as a human that you'd want to earn respect, not just blatantly give respect. You should want to earn it, right? It's almost like that saying, what can you do for others more so than they can do for you? When you come in with that mentality, you're coming in with the mentality of I want to earn respect. If you're going to be with somebody for a long period of time and you're going to build a relationship, why wouldn't you want to earn their respect? Why wouldn't you want to earn their trust? Why should you just give away trust? It's the young and naive that fall for this. I'm going to just give away trust for the sake of giving away trust. That's how you get taken advantage of. That's how you get used and abused. That's how you get pumped and dumped. And emotional damage. I think guys are too free, uh, too um, quick to give away Attention, resources, time. Interesting. All this stuff, yeah. Okay, so in your in your perspective, what is the ideal way for that to transpire? Wrong. Like for a man to know what like when a woman is worthy of that for him. Oh, she's gotta add value back. How, I'm trying to cover your puppy. Haram! What's God? There is no bot Haram! There is I'm, no covering bot shown. <laughs> there I'm covering is no bot it. I'm covering it. I'm covering it. Say hi. Do you okay? <laughs> is respect earned or given? Earn. Why is respect earned? Are you just going to copy what I just said? Just because I said I it? didn't hear what you said. I was making my video. Okay. <laughs> you think I'm a copycat? Yeah, you're a little copycat. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why is respect earned, not given? Because you can't just respect a person you don't even know. Um, and you don't even know how they're going to treat you and how your relationship are going to be. So by judging by their action, that's how they earn your respect. Okay, good. Now put on the glasses. And there you go. Where's the question? Or the question is, is respect earned or given? Earned. <laughs> okay, good. I'll give you back the glasses. <laughs> okay, get out of here. What? Oh. Oh. Mushroom. <laughs> Masha. Mushroom, I said. Mushroom, Masha. Okay, go. Being a pain in the ass, making his life easier, okay. being a utility versus being a liability. Okay. Um, all different ways, but I think uh, we kind of live in this society now where guys are so quick to give away what they've worked hard to acquire for women mm -hmm. that, quite frankly, don't deserve it or don't okay. give them, don't reciprocate value. Makes sense. Especially so, here in Miami and other major cities. Yeah. Okay. Understood. So my my follow question to you is like, in what way can a woman show that she is like, uh, like if a man and a woman start dating, what should she be doing? to show that she is like worthy of of the of everything you're talking about um obviously fierce loyalty right i think uh you know and it, it from how she behaves to how she dresses to how she conducts herself mm -hmm. um her behavior is in and out of real life if she has a social media profile she has a private um she's not posting uh, certain types of photos to make herself look uh, all sexy for other men's attention mm -hmm. i think a lot of it is um the woman protesting protecting her modesty okay all right yeah. got you and you so, cover are your, is your family wow good? right there all, he just gave a whole list of standards. Myron just gave a whole list of standards, right? How she treats her Instagram profile, how she treats her reputation, how she behaves, how she conducts herself in front of people, in front of others, in front of you. All those things factor into how modest is the girl, how humble is the girl. The more modest the girl is, the more humble she is, the more likely she is to submit to you. If she shows passive aggressive tendencies over aggressive tendencies, it makes her more of a modest person. It makes her more of a person that you'd like to build with. 
Those are good characteristics. <laughs> I respect that. That's, that's, that was, see, you see, sometimes you got to watch these videos and you really get a, a, a deep perspective as towards what men should be looking for when it comes to women. No. Yeah. Okay, so you already know this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's the reason why they got to cover the hair, right? To protect modesty. Yes, yes. This is haram, by the way, what I see. Yes. Wait, what? What's that? I, I, you're not covering your hair. It's haram. Okay. I'm just fucking with you. It's fine. I, I, I know that you like to be polarized. That's why I'm like, I'm okay with it because I think it's funny too. But my next question to you is like when... So if, <laughs> she, she likes the dark nature. She loves it. She loves it. A girl that you were really interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, like, would you ask her out? What would you be willing to do on the get go to like get her attention? Well, I think obviously the man should initiate courtship and initiate okay. the first date. And he should pay for the first date, etc. But it's got to be uh, a reasonable amount for him, right? And also not like be too extravagant where the girl doesn't feel uh, start to feel entitled to it. Because if you go crazy to the balls to the wall in the beginning, she's going to feel as though she deserves that every single time. I think it should right. be a slow escalation. Okay. In, um, What's the starting point? Privilege. It could be something as simple as a coffee date, right? okay. maybe even a drink at the bar. Or, okay. um, I'm not a big fan of dinner dates, maybe appetizers, okay. right? Because there's like a whole influx of women that like go on free dinner dates just to get free food. Okay. So, um, but also the guy's got to have some semblance of, you know, common sense. Like, okay, does this girl actually like me if I'm going to take her out for dinner? Like, guys got to be able to screen out girls okay. whether they want them for them or they're just using them for attention or free dinner date, whatever. How do you screen for that? I mean, there's a multitude of different ways. I mean, um, you know, is she touching you? Is she actually aroused by you? Does she give you compliments on uh, your looks? Does she actually find you? Because I, I think being arousing and being attractive are two different things. Mm -hmm. There's guys out there that are attractive because they make money, but they're not arousing because they're fat or they're weird. Right. You know? <laughs> okay. So Beautiful. I think. So how do you know that she's into you or that she likes you and that she's not just taking advantage of you for your money or your status? It's how she conducts herself and how she behaves around you as a man. You need to assess her level of comfortability and anxiety around you. You want to keep the anxiety low. You want to keep the fun factor up. You want to keep her smiling. You want her, you want a, her to come to you, be attracted towards the energy that you create. And that's done through your personality, through your charisma, through your smile. Sometimes even through your calmness, you have to find that nice little perfect balance of how do I keep her not as anxious and just keep her having fun. You need to understand, you know, you can't just be attractive. You have to be arousing too, both. Okay. That's where so many guys fuck up. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So then describe your ideal woman for me. Um, I mean, when it comes to that, I'm not, I'm more selective on behavior than looks. Okay. So she can't be a whore. Promiscuous past, any type of sex work automatically disqualifies her that she needs to be involved in, whether it's former sugar baby all the way up to being like a dancer. You know what's interesting? Like As I asked you what you look for in a woman, and you told me what you don't look for in a woman. Well, that, so that's the thing, because with her with getting rid of disqualifiers first. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if you work on disqualifiers, then that vets out a bunch. Okay, so let's say that you come across the woman that, in your opinion, is like the perfect woman, like from what you see from, from her so far. Okay. Are you willing to show up a little bit more at the beginning, at the offset? Well, that's why you have a vetting period. I don't okay. think a guy should commit to a girl until about at least a year in. Oh, interesting. So yeah. Wow, he changed from six months to a year in. I'd say realistically, keep it three to six months. Here's why I say three months, because it takes 90 days to get rid of a habit and 90 days to build a habit. So three to six months is a good indicator. Some people wanna skip the gun and do one, two, three months. Most of the times, women will not show you their true colors until later down the line. The more comfortable they get around you, the more they're going to show you who they truly are. So three to six months, I'd say. For me, six months. Commitment for at least a year. One year, it, it's a little bit, <laughs> It's crazy, but then again, I can understand it. I mean, a one-year vetting period for the girl that you're essentially going to be with for a long time, it's not bad. And what? on top of that, the girl's got to ask him out. All right. I would like I would like to hear more on that. Why? Yeah. Well, but you're saying the girl should ask the guy out. Yes. Okay, why? She should be the one to, to want to get the relationship. Initiate. Yes. Well, not initiate the courtship. Initiate a more serious relationship. And I know that sounds unorthodox and stuff like that, but when I when I break it down, it'll make sense. So, he who asks has no leverage, correct? He who asks has no leverage. Yes, if you're going to someone 
for a job application, right. for a job, they have all the leverage and they hire you, correct? Okay, I can so see that. So they're in a position where they can qualify or disqualify you, correct? Correct. So as the man, it's your job to make her earn the validation, right? To make her earn the validation? Yes. Okay. Because, okay, you're the leader. Yeah. Which means if you're the leader, then the woman needs to follow you, right? You're right. For a woman to follow your lead, she needs to respect you, right? Right. So she needs to feel like she's getting a prize when she's with you, correct? Right, correct. So I look at it like a, a prestigious law firm. If you're an attractive okay. guy and you got your shit together, you're like a prestigious law firm. Okay. People are applying to your law firm to try to get a job with you. Okay. Right? Okay. So when they show up to the job interview, they're going to come dressed appropriately. They're going to come understanding what it takes for the business. They're going to know, they're going to take the job more seriously because it's difficult to acquire. Right. So when the woman is asking you for the relationship, she's going to prize that relationship a lot more than if you ask her. Okay. I just lost my train of thought, too. Oh, what was I going to say? Frame you were mind. talking about what she brings, uh, table, uh, what she brings to entitlement. entitlement. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, but the same thing goes for women where it's like when a woman... It's funny because Myron is leading... She's the one asking the questions. This is Myron's <laughs> whole thing about why women deserve less. She's the one leading the, the engagement. And then she forgets and Myron has to take over and see like, no, this is where we're at. It's really the one... It's really Myron that's in control of this conversation. It's funny to watch. Knows what she brings to the table in terms of nurturing, taking care of her man, yeah. being the like he has the house, but she makes it a home kind of a situation. Yeah. I think it goes both ways, where a woman also has to be able to protect that for the right man. So it's like if a man is talking to a girl that doesn't like have any of that and isn't interested in the give in a relationship, yeah. then yeah, obviously you're not going to give her. But that's like you're saying, it's your responsibility well, as the man to that. That's why betting is so that. important. Yeah. yeah. For a year, that's why it's so important. Yeah. But I think we uh, agree on a lot of the things. I know. I know. The way I phrase things might trigger people or cause some crazy uh, questions. That's why, I, yeah. But yeah, that's why I think uh, in today's day and age, it's imperative for the girl to be the one to want to get the. And I'm not saying she has to get down on a knee and propose to you. I'm saying she, you know, what girls normally do. What are we? You know what I mean? When you, that type thing. Oh, okay. And then at that point, that's when you can dictate your terms as a man. Because I, I think. I genuinely believe as a man, you must have boundaries with women. You must. If you don't have boundaries with them... That goes both, it, both ways. No, it doesn't. It, women can't enforce boundaries on men. Interesting. Why not? Um, because men are the leaders. Like, for example, if you have a job, right? Do you go in there and tell your boss, these are my boundaries? No. Yeah. You, un you, you work for the company. You're their employee. So you follow their rules and regulations and their code of conduct, not the other way around. Do you think women ever lead men in any way in a relationship? Majority, they always do. Women lead men? Over, oh, lead? I thought you said lead. 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 Oh, a lot of times they do, and that's those are terrible relationships. Why? Uh, well, I've always said, uh, you know, women will, if a woman leads a relationship, she's going to lead to the end of it. And that's because women are just not naturally um, in a position to lead men in a romantic relationship. Okay, but do you agree that there's... Remember that women that tend to lead in relationships, this is what a lot of guys do that are in relationships for a long time is... They don't know how to, ex oh, what is it? They don't know how to state their boundaries or they don't know how to enforce their boundaries correctly. A lot of the times they'll say something and the girl will just overlook it or ignore it and they won't repeat themselves. They don't have a good sense of tonality. They won't hold their own girl responsible to their own standard standards and boundaries. You don't have to be abusive in doing this. Categories of leadership in a relationship? Or different types of leadership? For the pertinent things when it comes to leading a household. What, is leading, what does leading a household mean for you? I mean, that encompasses many different things. Being the protector, the provider, provisioner. I don't think women should work. I think they should be staying at home with the children. Mm -hmm. I think feminism is a lie. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think a man should be able to provide all that for a woman. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but I, I would... Remember, leading the household is essentially getting a place that has enough space for the amount of people that need to live there. You need to have food in the fridge. You need to understand that you build the home as a man and she creates the home. Women like to make the house the home. They like to bring in their candles. They like things to smell good. They like the room a certain temperature. You have to be willing to work with them to make it cozy. If you live a clean, organized lifestyle, where you're putting things back, where you're putting things back in the cabinets where they belong. You do this before. She's going to be more likely to move into you and nag you a lot less because you are the one holding the standards and she is the one organizing things just a little bit more towards her liking 
so that she feels comfortable enough to want to be in that environment. That women do also lead in the household in terms of like, for example, when a woman is like... That's, that's why I said pertinent, like the most pertinent things when it comes to like the, the, the family unit. Like, of course, the house, keeping it clean, chores, all that, that's fine. That's whatever. But I'm talking about like real decisions that need to be made, right? The man needs to do it. What are, what are real decisions? Hey, we got to move. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm getting the job. You need to follow me. Okay. Um, hey, uh, you know, we're going to... Of course, you got to love those guys that do that. Oh, I'm going to buy this. We want to buy this house or we want to buy this asset. I'm going to make the final decision on it. Like, life-changing decisions need to be made by the man. Okay. I'm not saying the woman can't be a... Uh, what's the term? He can't confide or ask her opinion to get her take on it, of yeah. course. But at the end of the day, the man has to be the final decision maker. I agree with that, Remember? but the, the other... The girl you choose, you trust and you respect, and especially if she's in your household, you want to be able to use her as an assist. This is also something that I've recently learned, is that, like, when men can't you like there, when there's no more logic to be used when there's a certain decision that needs to be made sometimes the only thing left is intuition right and a woman is the only thing that is connected to intuition men are not men are logical right so women actually like that's a really important thing a man needs to be able to come to a woman and rely on her intuition in order to make those like really important decisions that he doesn't have enough information or logic about yeah i mean i don't really like uh the whole concept of like I feel this way, so I'm going to make a decision. I think. Ah, it's not feel. Make... Intuition is a very, Intuition very. Intuition is based on feel, though. No, it's not. What is it based on? <laughs> Intuition is based on. You the, just, just the... admit a second ago. It, it's it's based on not having all the facts and kind of making a decision. But in the, the line. facts. So here's the thing. I'm actually a, a like a manifestation coach, and I help women use their intuition to start making. Um, the most aligned decisions for themselves. Uh -huh. Your intuition is coming from a place of higher knowing within yourself. Where there's a, there, so your intuition, so basically me and you are in the 3D right now, right? The 3D reality where there's past, present, and future. Yeah. Fifth dimension, time doesn't exist. Everything is happening simultaneously all at once. Yeah? Okay. So your intuition is actually coming from the, uh, the version of your consciousness that is in the fifth dimension <laughs> where time isn't real. So that version of your consciousness knows past, present, and future what decision you need to make to get to the most aligned destination. A lot of what she says about manifestation the unconscious and the conscious comes from a certain sense of psychology that involves visualization. The problem with women talking about manifestation constantly is that they oh, they prioritize and they only rely on visualization because they already attract a lot of the resources by being women, especially if you're an attractive woman. You're already attracting those resources and you're basically choosing which guy to follow or which guy not to follow. You're trying to choose the best option as a woman. I can understand that. But since society has misled women, women are predominantly making the wrong choices by their intuition. Female nature is supposed to help you, but it's not. It's failing you nowadays. That's why you need a man. Unfortunately, you need a man, fortunately, that respect understands your female nature and respects your female nature in the sense of they know how to use your emotions to get you to become the best version of yourself if you only rely on manifestation you're going to lose you're always going to lose if you only rely on visualization manifestation because nothing is real you're not changing your habits you're not writing down the things that you're thinking about the things you're consuming how you're acting how you're speaking how you behave when you start when you start to slowly change these habits around yourself then you start to manifest and visualize those things can work together but just prioritizing manifestation and going off all this intuition it's silly you have to build that intuition first in order to get the results does that make sense um it does um, I don't rely on that type of... Uh, because you're a man, you're not decisions. supposed to. You're supposed to rely on logic. A woman uses intuition, and a woman being in touch with her intuition is a valuable asset to a man. Because when he has no That's more facts left... That's why men gotta lead, guys. They use intuition. Depends on what's backed up by the intuition, right? <laughs> That's why we gotta lead. <laughs> you have me all the way into that. <laughs> you have me all the way into that. Remember, women that are younger in their 20s, their intuition is, I'm going to follow a guy that is much older than me. And, met, and many of the times, that guy that's much older than them might just be attractive, but they may also be drug dealers, scammers, and <laughs> cheaters. <laughs> and they're following that guy. As a father, would you want your daughter to follow a guy like that? No, but they're following their intuition. They look at me movies, they watch movies, they watch TV shows, 
and they're immediately attracted by the bad boy type because again, that's forming their intuition. They have a bad sense of intuition. If you have a woman that's led by a good father, her intuition is going to be, I want to be led by a good man. If you have a woman that has no father or a father has treated her terribly or she just resents the father for whatever reason, something she saw on TikTok, and therefore she's going to have a bad sense of intuition. Okay. Wouldn't it be fair to say though that like a fact is a fact regardless of who says it? Uh, yeah. Or, you know, or their but qualifications. Okay, yeah. Because, like, I've always thought yeah. it was, because, like, anytime I have these discussions, a lot of times, like, girls always ask the inevitable, uh, do you are have you? a girlfriend? Okay, as, yeah. if, as if, like, to, because that, I know where that question comes from. It comes from, are you in a position of authority to speak on something yep. that you may or may not even be involved in? Well, t- exactly. For example, if you have a homeless guy talking a bunch of RP, the facts are still facts. Men are still going to see what he's saying is facts. But are people really willing to listen to him? No, because he's a homeless dude. You don't want to listen to a guy. You don't want to take advice from a homeless guy because if you're taking advice from the homeless guy, in your brain, your pattern recognition is saying, oh, I might just end up homeless. Right? You don't have the same level of respect as you would a guy wearing a $10,000 suit, $50,000 gold watch, driving up in a Ferrari, and he's talking about the RP. You're more likely to listen to him. Why? Because he has assets or materialistic items that you would envision yourself having, you see that as successful, you see the RP talking points, and you're like, oh, Andrew Tate? <laughs> For me personally, the reason why I ask is because it, when you have an intimate relationship with a woman that is very connected to herself, yeah. you understand that there's a very valuable level of guidance that you get from her because she's spiritually more spiritually connected than you are. So if you've never been with a woman who is spiritually connected or is uh, connected with her intuition, and then she does lead with her emotions. And at that point, it is one of those things where it's like, yeah, I am a man that needs to lead because my woman is going to lead with emotions and that's never valid. So I have been with girls like that before, but okay. I just don't listen to them. Been with girls be, like what? That, that have that like intuition or, Virtual. hey, um, I get this gut feeling, whatever. I just don't listen. I just don't listen to them because I'm very... Um, pragmatic in a lot of the things that I do. Right. So uh, I just, you know, I understand that there's a place and time for intuition, gut feeling, etc. But I would say 90% of the time or better, I'm trying to be pragmatic in my decision making. And I think that's one of the biggest delineating differences between men and women is that we tend to make decisions based on facts and evidence and circumstances versus women make uh, decisions based on how they feel, um, what feels right. So and I get it. I think it's one of the good differences between the two. But I think as a man, your ability... Thank you, Angie. I think as a man, uh, you know, uh, it's your job to be able to... I don't know if anybody noticed, but his his girl, Myron's girl, just came by and dropped off his book, Why Women Deserve Less. <laughs> oh, W Flex. Get that the best you can. Interesting. We'll probably have to just disagree to, or agree to disagree on that one because sure. yeah. I think like the, the intuition thing for me is not emotional. It's based on yeah. facts from your higher self. But either way, though, I okay. respect it. No and it was nice talking to you. It was a pleasure to talk to you, too. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Intuitions are, in fact, from your higher self. But what I did like is, listen, this girl, she realizes all the polarizing things that Myron says online, all the things that women call him misogynistic for. She was able to sit down, ask strong questions, and more importantly, listen to what Myron was saying. Respectfully having a back and forth, nothing negative. She is feminine. She has a certain sense of of uh, like a nurturing factor to her, a, a good kind of aura or vibe off her, where she is a little bit that way. But again, as soon as you peel back the layers, you don't know where you're gonna find. A lot of times, women will show you will show you this show you this character that they've built, but then you start peeling back the layers, and you're like, oh, it's all manifestation. It's all like, do you trust in your manifestation more than you trust in your man? This girl might. Right, this girl. If her chakras ain't ain't lined up right, she might not go for her. She might not uh want to be led by her man. So be very careful in these interact. Be be very careful with these kinds of spiritual manifestation guru women. But great interaction overall. Let's see. Let's see what the comments say. Women's intuition equals ruining relationship than using a higher self to justify not taking responsibility for my own action. (laughs) It's great. That's the point I was trying to make. 434 likes. So if women have intuition, why do they keep picking the wrong guy? (laughs) All right. A woman's intuition is actually a thing. Why doesn't that intuition tell them when a man is unhappy, a man is a narcissistic? 
she was going to be a single mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Granted, I'm a man, but my intuition tells me to avoid these types of women at all costs. There you go. <laughs> the comment section couldn't agree with me anymore. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, if you like what you watched here, there is a part two video that I could be doing. If this video does well, I'll react to this one as well. Expired 40-year-old found out why she's single and divorced. So let me know what you think below in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like and join my community on X and on Instagram if you want to see more stuff like me being out here in Miami. Don't forget, don't forget, guys. If I provided you with any sort of value, entertainment, right, or something that you could actually apply to your life, Drop a like on the video, all right, or subscribe. Jesus.